just uh, confirming the server order like i said if they want to do alternate on the servers that's fine by me uh scarlet says let's do three europe two na i think that's fair i like that that works for me so we're starting on europe second game na third game europe fourth game na fifth game europe i think that's pretty fair since i do think that will still uh favors scarlet a tiny bit but it obviously favors gerald too because then three out of five could be on europe i will just screen vetoes i don't know what that means but ready when you guys are our main event of the evening the sixth edition of the basilisk big brain bouts this one was a little bit harder for me to plan because i had uh, such a wild weekend for the people who missed it basically last friday i did the bbb i went to bed around midnight my alarm clock went at 6 a.m had to go to the train station in Rotterdam, took a train to Cologne, rented a van, drove to Vienna, came back, spent the night at Frankfurt Hauptbahnhof from midnight till 5 a.m. And then in the end, I came home on Monday morning, 10 a.m. So I didn't have too much time to contact players over the weekend as I was busy driving the van, but now I have a lot of time to get ready for this. <laughs> Thank you very much, Captain Hare. Thank you, Anubis Khan, as well for the 15 months. 10 gifted subs. That is super awesome. The alerts are activated in this scene, but, but I've also deactivated the alerts in the other scene. So you guys don't have to be distracted and annoyed at loud alerts with text-to-speech while we are watching games. I think it's all pretty good setup. I love it. Let's enjoy the final best of five of the night. Let's get it on. Round one. Fight. In the bottom left side of a waterfall, we are looking at the main base of the man who has not made an appearance yet in the big rain bouts. This is the first time, and I think it's safe to say that he's got a very tough challenge ahead of him. I think he's an underdog, but he is good though, guys. He has made playoffs multiple times in Europe, so he clearly is very capable of winning a best of five like this. Sidestorm Gaming's Gerald. Beautiful mustache, beautiful room, biggest room in Poland. We're all very jealous, goes without saying. In the top right side, I am so happy that C agreed to play tonight, even against the Protoss, which we all know that C is not ultra fond of. Representing the Shopify Rebellion, I think it's safe to say a veteran of the scene at this point, it is Scarlet, our Canadian hero. <laughs> Scarlet definitely struggled a little bit with the Protosses in the most recent edition of the Dream Act Masters NA Atlanta. See, so did manage to beat Trigger and Disc. Against Trigger, it was pretty convincing. That was a 3 to 1. Against Disc, it was very close, 3 to 2. And obviously, he ended up losing 3 to 1 against Neep. And I believe it was 3 0 against Australia. So, the ZVP, probably not the best of her three matchups. Now, if Scarlet does win very convincingly, we can always get a little more Scarlet, right? If Scarlet has a good time tonight, if her stream does well, if she has fun playing in the event. I think there was a good chance that C will do again. I can let you guys know that my original dream was to get Scarlet against Big Gabe. And I do think that would have been a banger of a best of five. Especially because Scarlet or ZVT is always great. Unfortunately, guys, Gabe shut me down. Gabe said, oh, no, I do not play cross-server events unless there are EPT points on the line. And on top of that, I do not want to play in anything until DreamHack Masters at Lanta. So Gabe is saving builds. Uh, but that's okay. We are we are ready to enjoy some ZVP, and that's fine as well. What's up with Todd, Ruddy? I don't think anything is up with Todd. Hopefully, he is enjoying his life in Vienna right now, mate. Uh, I don't know why you're asking me. I don't know if something happened, but as far as I know, he's just getting settled in his new apartment in Vienna at this point. Todd owes me big time for all the... The effort that I put in over the last weekend. Right? What's he up there? There, That's what I mean. Well, Todd was living in the center of Cologne for the last eight to nine years. The main reason he moved to Cologne was to work for ESL a long time ago. Uh, eventually, ESL let go of all their full-time commentators. So, obviously, Todd did not really have a reason to live in Cologne anymore. He still stayed for a little while. But we all know that Todd, his uh, interests are... Definitely poker. That is, ooh, this adept, by the way. That's, that's a bit of a waste for adept. One adept goes down, does not get a single drone. Todd really loves poker, and apparently the the laws or the tax law in Germany is very unfriendly to poker players. 
and Todd really wants to take his poker game to the next level. Uh, Vienna is a lot better. Austria apparently has very pleasant rules. If you try to make a living out of poker, I don't think you have to pay any taxes over winnings. Uh, and on top of that, I think Todd was just getting a little bored of Cologne. He didn't have too many local friends. A lot of them moved out uh, over the years. And yeah, he also lived in the dead center above a bar. And Todd really hates noise. And he was wondering, uh, why are people singing every weekend? I was like, well, Todd, you kind of live in the center of a very big city in Germany, above an Irish pub. There's a good chance people are going to be loud. Yeah, but they uh, just want to play some games. They are singing, we are the champions every weekend. These things happen, Todd, if you live above a bar. But yeah, he just wanted something else. So he found a place in Vienna, and then he reached out to me and asked if I could help him move. What the fuck are they doing over there? They cannot be the champions every week. It doesn't make any sense. I'm like, well, Todd, they don't have to be the champions every week <laughs> to have a couple beers and enjoy themselves. Anyway, we have two Dark Templars uh, getting picked up by the War Prism. I think so far this is a very clean opening by Scarlet. It's obviously all very standard. We are working on a creep. We got a couple of links out. The nice thing about DTs, guys, is that it's not all about the damage you do on the other side of the map. It's also very nice to have defensive DTs, as you guys can see here. One Adept, but a couple of Dark Templars will keep the Nexus safe. And we'll just kind of take the game from there. Only one more Prism. <laughs> Where is Robbie Plata, guys? I want some double Prism. Eight Archon action. Let's go. And then when we get attacked, we accidentally put it above a Spore Crawler and a couple of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get it, Rob, because at first they were treating home safely. But then you right click them back into the spore and the queens. <laughs> it was a rough day. Yeah. I still thank you for playing, mate. I hope you had some fun. Make sure to fill in the form that I sent you so you can still get your participation money. The links of Scarlet running around looking for some free pickups. That is a very quick infestation pit, by the way. I think that's the first thing that really stands out to me in this game. Scarlet, her macro has obviously always been very good. Her creep spread is very good. But that is an infestation pit as quick as I've seen any lately. Six minutes and it's pretty much done. I actually wanted to do a U against Juggernaut Jason, Robbie. But uh, Jason was not available. He said he had a game night with some mates and he promised that he was going to be there, so he couldn't make it. And that's when I thought of Nemshaw. Swarm host, guys. Okay. Six minute and 30 seconds swarm host. I wasn't quite sure if this was just going to be some ultra quick hive or what it was going to be. But swarm host for Scarlet. I, I don't hate it, actually, on this map. Like, if you have swarm host here, this base is going to be in a lot of trouble. I know that I would absolutely uh, roll over and die against this build. Good news for us is that obviously Gerald is no Roddy. I don't know why he's shooting at his own gateway. But that won't go on forever. Gerald has no idea though. He is a little bit like Scotty right now guys. The man does not know. Archons are not very good against Locust. I know the idea is maybe that like locusts clump up and then archons can one shot them, but I think we all know that the moment the locusts land, archons just melt. Roach, Ravager, Swarmos can also make your supply just absolutely explode. And, like we're gonna see one of these moments where Gerald is hovering around 125 supply. Scarlet is literally going to be maxed out. Thank you so much, uh, Pi Chronic, for the three months in advance. I really appreciate it. We are going to warp in a couple of extra stalkers, so we will get a hatchery kill. But on the other side of the map, guys, we've got them locusts going. And one shield battery is not going to do anything. Not even shield battery overcharge can save you here. The good news for Gerald, I guess. Oh, that's a big ball. <laughs> that is as big of a Nova as we have seen today. We saw a couple of good ones between Disc and Goblin. But that is a monstrous shot. I still think it's totally fine for Scarlet because her army supply is big. But that was definitely a very big Nova. I do think the Locusts probably should have made up their mind. A couple of them went for the probes. A couple of them went for the gateways. The next wave, though, is going to be killer. I think even if the entire army is at home, I think the next wave of Locusts will kill the Nexus. This is a fun game, though. It's very different, right? Uh, you can warp in as many stalkers as you want, but 
I think this Nexus is dead, or at least a lot of probes are going to fall, a couple of pylons, but Scarlet does go for the Nexus, and look at the DPS of these little guys. They remind me of that Hornet that was terrifying us here in Zeitland. Rainer has labeled it the monster of Zeitland, or the Zeitland killer. Locusts are intimidating, and so was that Hornet. Now we have a few Vipers on the way, and Gerald does not exactly have the economy to casually get a couple of High Templars and maybe yeah, land some feedbacks. I'm not quite sure. Like 128 army supply against 58 guys. I know Novas are good. And we already saw a very big one. We're going to warp in a couple of DTs. That's kind of smart, I guess. That's a, a good way. To, okay. Or just to kill a hatchery. Could have been nice defensively too. If the Locusts are not backed up by an Overseer, DTs can be kind of nice. Ooh, careful, Gerald. You do not want to lose your War Prism, Amigo. You're really not in a position to lose a bunch of DTs in a Prism. Ends up losing one DT. I like the Nidus. That is a sweet touch. Scarlet is playing really good here. Scarlet is playing really good against a player that has made it into the playoffs of the Dream Act Masters Europe multiple times over the last two years. Okay, okay. These Novas are going to slap. Wow, somehow they were really underwhelming. I thought they were going to slap. They didn't slap. What does slap are a couple of roaches at the bottom side of the map. I do think Scarlet should try to kill the battery first rather than the stalkers. Jarrod is going to use a recall. Hmm. Couple of roaches bit out of position. Nice little Nova there. Obviously Jarrod is just going to try to buy time. Obviously the bigger his army becomes the less impactful that the swarm host should be. The swarm host can be uh, very heavy on your supply and can make the rest of your army a bit smaller. Right now Scarlet has 25 roaches, don't quite see them, the Vipers are a little bit exposed, one of them gets picked off, but Scarlet does land an Abduct, a second Abduct, the Disruptor is getting unloaded out of the Prism, one Abduct cancels it, and the other Nova, I don't know if it went off or not, I'm feeling the War Prism kicked, uh, picked it up too early, Scarlet her supply is still so freaking big though, it's just not dropping. Not too much gas in the bank, so obviously this game is far from over. I do like it for Scarlet, but Scarlet needs more victories. I think so far so good, but it is really important for Scarlet that she keeps finding victories in the next 90 seconds. Because if she doesn't, then Gerard's going to max out on just a better army. And without a gas bank, that is obviously going to be very problematic. A couple of queens are left behind in the center of the map. They will drop some French fuse on one another, but two out of three do fall. Roach is a little bit misrelished right now. Gerald's doing a really good job, man. I am very impressed by what Gerald is showing us here. He's going to blink on the high ground. That means he can blink for a while. Uh, this is uh, not an army you want to fight if you're Gerald. Stalkers are not going to do too hard. Gerald really wants that hatch. I feel like he's a bit stubborn. That means that in return he ends up losing an Archon. Lost a couple of Stalkers. Only 300 gas in the bank for Gerald, too. More Stalkers in a bit of trouble. Roach is on the left side. I mean... This fight is just super spread out. Most of the time that favors the Zerg. Because obviously Stalkers are very good, but you kind of need to babysit them, right? You need to blink them back one by one. You can't really just let them A move and let them do their thing. Locust gets spawned. This is a, a decent Protoss army though, but these Locusts in the main base are definitely going to cause some issues. Scarlet ends up losing another base. I mean, this game is just kind of wild at this point. Gateways are empowered, and gateways are in a bit of trouble. Another Nova! Oh my goodness! What an abduct by Scarlet there, guys. That abduct just saved so many roaches, but that uh, abducted, or did not save that many roaches. That Nova did go off. I meant that in the end, Gerald still had a little victory towards the tail end of all of that. Man, economically, this is kind of a wild game too. Uh oh. The swarmers are trapped and there is nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Scarlet cannot save these after the night is not works got taken out. That is a big pick up for Gerald. Does now no longer have to worry about all these swarmers. Scarlet makes it up to Lurkus, but... For the Lurkers to be very impactful, obviously they need their high tech upgrades, right? They need Seismic Spines, they need Adaptive Talents. But more importantly than those things even, is that we need the Vipers to land up Ducks. Because if we cannot land up Ducks, the Disruptors are going to be too good. That is a good Abduct though. 
not a Nova. Ooh, Scarlet, unfortunate split there. Splits off four or five units into the Nova of Gerald. And Gerald, for the first time in a very long time, has kind of even up the supplies. This is a great game, too. Oh, we've had some very fun, close, competitive StarCraft tonight, guys. Obviously, different levels, right? But I do think it's been uh, fun. This is an impressive game by Gerald. I would have been very unhappy with the position that he was in multiple times. And he might still be in trouble. If we cannot get High Templars, we are still in trouble. But it is a fun game. Couple of roaches and a Hydra will run into a few DTs. Good job by Scarlet bringing an Overseer. Yeah, it was like 110 army supply against 42. And just not ready, not being ready for swarm host is most of the time so problematic. Because then the first wave is just absolutely devastating. And it was good, but the second one was better, I guess, in the end. Because the first one was kind of 50-50 on the gateways and the probes. Couple balls picked off one of the lurkers on the right side. But lurkers are not extremely expensive. So Scarlet can definitely replace a couple of those. We've got 12 and 2 Vipers. What do we like game 1 for chat? Let me know. Because I have no idea. We have another abduct landing. One more disruptor should be in trouble. And another sweet abduct there by Scarlet. Final Viper dies, but somehow, as his last egg, it lands an Abduct. I mean, that Viper left Waterfall 20 seconds ago. But its will <laughs> was to abduct one more Viper, and it did. Or one more Disruptor. We have six extra Vipers on the way for Scarlet. I do really love that, because obviously Scarlet is aware of the fact that there is a lack of High Templars. Ambitious forward blink there by Gerald. Sweet baby Jesus. Uh, who's winning? I, I think I like it for Scarlet still, guys. I think I still like it for Scarlet. But I guess we do need a great fight sometime soon. You don't want to give Gerald all the time in the world to get extra right employees out, land feedbacks. Maybe get like an Oracle for Revelation to make it easier to feedback. What are the losses at? Why don't you guess, Fiont? What are the losses at in this game? Who lost more resources? As we have a few more Novas going down, another Lurker falls. We have Stalkers blinking forward again into Stalkers. I actually think... I think it's very close. I think the units lost resource tab is very, very close. 5.3k, no way. Absolutely no way. I think it's very close. 18.9 against 19.9. So Gerald lost a thousand resources less. Definitely not 5. I mean, a thousand resources after a 17-minute game. I think that qualifies as very close. After that abducted, got even closer. <laughs> wow, I ruddy with the skill. I mean, we have been doing this almost each and every single day, mate, for the last 12 years. So I may hope I have a tiny bit of knowledge. Sometimes we're off, but we always blame that on the whiskey. But we didn't have any whiskeys yet, so I can't be off. Stalkers blink forward, but uh, Scarlet actually left a couple of Lurkers already seized up on the left side. The Novas are going to go off, though. And the final Lurkers on the left side all fall, but at the same time, the Vipers are impactful. Man, this game is just wild. We are now abducting individual High Templars. Can Gerald run through this? It's a decent amount of Lurkers, and Gerald says no. Or Gerald says yes. Now with a battery finishing up a couple of cannons, and all that's left is Lurkers. Nice spread, man. Beautiful concave by Gerald. And Gerald will successfully push this back. But it obviously did cost him a lot of his high-tech units. The high Templars, the Robos. Wow, this is actually a sick game. A really sick game. 18 minutes. But it's not one of these 18-minute games where we completely split the map and creep is everywhere. And there is not a lot happening. No, it's been 18 minutes of back and forth action and a lot of trading. And now we've got three Archons, two Disruptors, and Storm on the way, all at the same time. Couple Archons are trailing though, and Scarlet will land a few more of Ducks with the six Vipers that are still flying around. It's a, it's a beautiful game between these two. The Lurk account is at 14. Scarlet is going to split up her army a little bit. Battery Overcharge has been activated, and Scarlet will take out the battery. Now sends over the rest of her army. Have to see. Oh no, Gerald, Gerald, Gerald! 
Nice abducts again by Scarlet. One Nova did go off, and it was a big one. Can the Lynx get that Templars? The answer is yes. Oh, that was beautiful by Scarlet. Capitalizing on the fact that Gerald that Gerald recalled some of his army, but not all of it. A big Nova from downtown though blows up the majority of the Hydras. But who cares about losing some Hydras if you've got Lurk is just absolutely obliterating everything. A couple of Zealots is not going to be enough. A few more Zealots I don't think is going to be enough. And I think the final Immortals will fall too, and that is going to do it. Ah, that was sick. Gerald used his Protoss get out of jail free card. Ah, nice Nova. But he actually got punished for using Rico there. Very quick thinking by Scarlet. That's a big brain play, guys. That's the Basilisk big brain bout stamp of approval. Immediately moving the rest of her forces towards the left side to get a great fight against only half of the army of Gerald. And it kind of left all the spellcasters very exposed. And I don't think that Gerald can bring this back anymore. A 20 minute very back and forth game. And in the end it seems like it does go towards Scarlet. Gerald is mining a bit more but a day late, a dollar short. Somebody asked if Gerald killed the Hive. Nope, we did kill the Spore Crawler, or the Spore Crawler got moved. But the Hive is absolutely not down. I think this is too many Lurkers, too many Vipers. I don't often see a 20 minute plus fun PVZ on uh, Waterfall. I feel like most of the time when games go long, this becomes rather boring as a map. It's just kind of split and then. This is not a whole lot happening until we slowly but steadily trade out the silly units for the great TA units. And that was absolutely not the case this time around. Scarlet has uh, 30 extra links on the way. Obviously he's not ultra rich and so needs to be a little bit careful. I think the only way that Scarlet can lose is if he takes a very bad fight near Overcharge and Nova's like that keep landing. I mean there's still so many Vipers. Abduct is a very, very useful ability. Zerg would not be very fun to play if Abduct was not a thing. I'll tell you guys that much. One Nova suffers up the Lurker, but the other one does not connect. Another Abduct does land, but not before the Nova went off. Ooh, the Lynx guys, keeping the Disruptors trapped. Another sweet play by Scarlet, who has now even uh, taken this base at 9 o'clock. Gets her hands on one of the bases that is obviously supposed to belong to Gerald. Gerald was mining of it once upon a time. And it's always a very bad feeling when you are mining off a base that now belongs to your opponent. Especially when it's right next to one of your own bases. <laughs> Couple of cannons and a battery is probably not going to be enough to deal with this many links, Hydras and Lurkers. Gerald is going to send it one time and one time only. Even the High Templars are ending in their uh, auto attack. And I gotta say, it does look like a decent Protoss army, but it's mostly spellcasters. Couple of Zealots doing their thing. No, we lost the detection or what? We lost detection. <laughs> we did not bring the observer. We lost detection. And that is the end of all the Templars and all the disruptors. And otherwise, it could have still been close. GG. Scarlet takes the 1-0 lead in the main event. Ah, great game. A really great game. 22 minutes, but 22 minutes full of action. I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much, Basilisk. These are groups. And not a dead block, guys. Appreciate it. Hopefully you guys are having fun watching StarCraft. They told me that this is their favorite part of the week. Where they can just lean back and enjoy some StarCraft too. So, I hope that this Friday is no different. I am now on the American server. And this means that, I guess, uh, I think they've already done their maps. Toot 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 toot. Oh, I guess uh, you guys host. Let me just double check that. You guys host this one for me. Uh, they did their vetoes in private, so I don't know the veto, so I can't really uh, randomly host the map. Alright, now Jared is telling me that it's data C, so I guess then I can host. Data C. WCS Game Art, US East. I hope that I can find Scarlet. Data C, Cosmic, Moondance, Inside and Out. Uh, Scarlet is not in the channel. Maybe I can find her on the ladder or something. 
Could somebody let Scarlett know in her stream that we are in channel Roddy Stream? R O T T I S T R E A M. I can't spell. We live five and a half hours. I put Roddy as a reference on my resume and I got an interview. Is that so, mate? What did you apply for? How weird are we gonna make this? <laughs> Def one? Def one? For what? Do, do. Da, 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 na, 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 na. All right, guys, we have an issue because we can't find Scarlet. I will uh, send her a little message. Scarlet. I'm super happy that my internet uh, got saved, by the way. I, was, I always get sad when we have a little bit of lag. Oh. That is true, Robbie. I, n I remember you asked me that. Whoops. I thought I went. Oh. Scarlet is uh, struggling trying to connect to NA by the looks of it. Yeah, all right, she already sees me. Apparently we're friends, I didn't even know that. I like uh, Scarlet, her interface. I've never seen this, guys. This is very Warcraft 3 themed, isn't it? It kind of looks like the Night Elf Warcraft 3 in-game uh, console that you got if you bought uh, the fantastic remastered game. All right, erase. Ta -da. See, it's basically a Warcraft streamer. I highly doubt that. All right, I think players are ready. Scarlet said ready anytime. Gerald is ready. Great first game. Let's hope that game two is going to be half as good as game one, and then I'll already be happy. But overall, guys, I am happy with this edition of the Vassal of Big Brain Browts. Uh, I feel like we've had some good laughs. We had some big brain plays. We had some silly plays. It's just, it's been a good time. So. What more can I really ask for? Let's go ahead and hop into game two. The Ada C will be our battleground. Round two, fight. In the bottom left side of the Ada C, we are looking at the main base of the Polish Protoss. He is down 0-1. I always like to cheer for the guys that are down, so I hope he's able to tie things up. And that will be the fourth series where the person that was down 0-1 ties things up in a row. Good job, Roddy. This is Sidestorm Gaming's Gerald. I haven't even played a single minute of F1 yet in the entire month. In the top right side of Data C, we are looking at the main base of Shopify Rebellions as Scarlet taking the 1 0 lead. So, uh, shout out to Der Einzige Teichte Maria Magia for 15 months. I don't know what's happening with me today, guys. I've had a very long week. I honestly feel that I have not been able to relax since uh, last Friday. I kind of feel like tomorrow is my first chill day. Uh, they obviously have the Africa Cup playoffs in the first six, seven hours of the day. So I think I'm just going to relax a little bit, explore the great outdoors, maybe do a tiny bit of shopping. Ooh, I like this. Well. I might plan some relaxing tomorrow, but I don't think that uh, Gerald is going to relax a whole lot in this game. Scarlet with a little bit of inspiration over Root Cats by the looks of it. I feel that Cats is the OG of uh, going hatch hatch. We've got six probes just kind of zapping, tasering away on this hatchery. Gerald does have a probe in the main base of Scarlet, so... That's an idea, right? Whenever you face a build like this, it's important to identify what kind of a hatch block it is and how serious you have to take this, how much you have to react. And it seems that Gerald, his response is just going to be the six probes. After the hatch got cancelled, we're going to morph the drone into an evolution chamber. You guys wonder, how can Scarlet build an evil chamber on the other side of the map? It's with a little bit of leftover creep of the hatchery. I was about to say that's a kill, but it's not a kill. Scarlet just likes to apparently cut it incredibly close. You know, it'd be very annoying right now if this drone would morph into an extractor. That has happened to me in the past, and I'm sure to many of you guys. But Gerald has prevented that, and even the first adapt is out. So this drone will fall. It doesn't change the fact that Gerald, his expand, is a whole lot later than Gerald would love it to be. Meanwhile, Scarlet, her hatchery, is already up and running. 
Link speed on the way. I'd say this is a successful Scarlet, but I'm obviously not a ultra expert in like the proxy hatch, block, cancel, evo. So, I don't know. But I would definitely say advantage uh, Scarlet. I kind of felt that what she tried to accomplish, she managed to accomplish. Gerald, his build is obviously thrown off a little bit. Your timings are all going to be different. I hate playing games like this from the Protoss perspective, but that's just me. Gerald is a veteran. Shouldn't shake him up all too much. We do see a Stargate going down. Could be a couple of oracles into Blink, like we've seen a few times today on Data C. Obviously a solid opening. Okay, hello? Void Ray? That's weird. Could just be Void Ray into expand into uh, oracles, but we don't see the Void Ray very often anymore. It's a expensive unit. Takes a lot of supply. Takes a little while. It's not very good aggressively. Maybe you can do something cool with like Void Ray Oracle, but I highly doubt that. Or we can just go Mass Void Ray and bring back the Shield Battery era, baby. But no. It is Void Ray into Oracle. I wonder if Scarlet is going to be worried about Mass Air after she sees the Void Ray. It is obviously a good unit to just hunt some overlords around the map. Take away a bit of that Zerg map vision. The links of Scarlet are going to show up, but I think the two adapts, that's going to be more than enough. It does force the Void Ray to turn around for a brief moment. And while it's turning around, it allows the overlords to return home safely. Also, it's obviously pretty good in like picking off a creep tumor here and there. So. I don't know. Maybe I like it. Double Forge. That's very quick. I hope this probe will not keep doing that. It does not. Oracle is going to show up the top side of the map. That Oracle is in a lot of trouble and it <laughs> will live. But geez Louise, that was close. 1 HP, guys. A 1 HP Oracle. Obviously not quite the start I think that Gerald was looking for. Flies it straight into three queens and a spore crawler. Just a little bit sloppy. I was maybe hoping that Scarlet didn't have a spore crawler yet because of the Void Ray opening. Uh, you're happy that it survived on 1 HP, but this is overall not very happy. At this point, Gerald is already 14 workers behind, guys. That is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's one way to get some value out of your Void Ray, but it's really not the most impactful thing that we are going to see today, or have seen. The Void Ray gets a cancel on the Baneling Nest. That is just a sentence that I do not say very often, and I don't think I am going to say anytime soon again in the near future. But it's, it's kind of irrelevant, right? Like, yeah, sure, and it loses a couple minerals, and... You can say now the bailings are going to be a little bit later, but it's not like Scarlet is on the clock and really needs her bailings anytime soon. Scarlet ideally doesn't even want to make too many bailings before plus two is done. I really don't think I've ever said that. I mean, I'm sure that I have seen like a Void Ray kill a bailing nest. But this is just a very irrelevant moment for a Void Ray to get a cancel on the bailing nest. It's just super out of the ordinary, but... So good, a lot of links are going to show up at this bottom base of Scarlet. Oh, we see me of Gerald, and Gerald is forced to cancel this Nexus. One of the Adepts falls too. I I'm very concerned for Gerald in this game. I'm kind of trying to see where all of this is going. Seems like that was a kill, not a cancel. Yep, Gateway got picked up too. I, I don't like it, guys. I don't see anything in the near future where I'm like, that's going to be great for Gerald. I don't think Gerald wants to go Storm. It seems that he just wants to get great fights with well upgraded Archons and Stalkers. Near cannons and batteries, obviously the dream is alive. Away from static defenses, his army is going to suck for a long time. And I think Scarlet, her Hydra account, is going to absolutely explode in the near future. We're already looking at 12 Hydras in a pre 8 minute game. Okay, we do get Storm. I'm happy to see that. I think that's one of the only things that's really going to help Gerald to convincingly hold or win a fight. 
But I don't know if Scarlet is going to give Gerald the time for Storm to really kick in. Plus two melee is on the way. Hydra's speed is very close to finishing up. We call it the muscular augments. So it's Hydra's speed before Groove's spines too. That's also something that's a little bit outdated. I feel like almost all the time you see Groove's spines before Hydra's speed. I think that is an indication that Scarlet wants to get a little aggressive. Links once more going for a little counter attack. The doors are wide open here, by the way. If Scarlet would have right clicked these links into the main base, it could have been very annoying to deal with. And if uh, Gerald holds this, I think we can all just type into the chat one time that Protoss is bullshit and broken. Because I have the feeling that this has not been his game. He does have 87 probes at this point. How many High Templars are we looking at? Okay, I think the Fleet Beacon is very excessive, man. We have 49 Army Supply, guys. We have 49 Army Supply and we're dropping a Fleet Beacon. You know, that's fine if it's early in the game and that's part of your plan, but... I think right now, Gerald, this is getting carried away, thinking about a phase in the game that's not going to happen. Because here is Scarlet with a good old Zerg army of a lot of Hydras, a lot of links and a lot of Bane links. The cannon falls, a couple of the gateways are going to fall. Gerald seems to just give up on this base immediately. We drop the revelation. Where are them high templars? We got storm. Okay, the first two storms are pretty good. Those are pretty good storms. Do we have a few more where that's coming from? Yeah. Battery overcharge has been used. Seems that Scarlet is gonna run a couple of banings into the bottom base too. But Stasis Trappy. Stasis Trappy is good. Stalker movement is good. Now Scarlet turns around again on the left side. Oh, the probes are coming back, by the way. The probes are coming back to this base. The probes are coming back. But they turn around again and the stalkers save it. Can the Hydra actually kill the Nexus? No, it's a lot of gateways that fall. It's an Archon or two that falls. I mean, the links are going to be very, very powerful here, guys. The Banelings are now unfrozen out of the Stasis Trap. And these are plus two Banes. <laughs> two Banes is all it takes for an entire probe line to disappear. This fight has been going on for a little while, so we might get Coco's very famous second overcharge. But I'm afraid that that is also not going to make the difference. Nice spinal storm, but look at the mini-map. In attacks like this, Scarlet has done a great job in just covering the center of the map in creep, and that's obviously going to make it a bit easier for these reinforcements to show up. Not sure if Scarlet is aware of this base. The answer is no. I mean, those two banes was... Uh, that's definitely the difference, right, between this being so-so uh, or still kind of good. Gerald is not down enough because he does have plus two attack, plus two armor. And a few more High Templars, but he morphs the High Templars into an uh, Archon. A Storm is not quite done yet. Storm is still not done. Overcharge number two. I think Hydra Ling is too powerful here, guys. A hundred army supplies out on the map for Scarlet. Only 18 is left for Gerald. The probes fall, the Nexus fall. And Scarlet is relentless with her aggression here in the second game of the main event of the evening. Find a few stocks will not make the difference. Bailings trying to connect with the probes one more time. One bailing. Four minus four probes. Yeah, that's pro that's kind of the problem when you go for like a void ray and you just don't really do a whole lot. A void ray in an oracle, you get zero drones. Scarlet is insanely good in macroing up and then figuring out figuring out what kind of an attack could work. I think that was a very clean and convincing game out of the Shopify Rebellion Scarlet. That means Scarlet now takes a match point. She's up 2-0. That's the first time tonight, by the way, guys, that we have a 2-0. But we do go back to the European server and see if Gerald can turn things around. Yeah. What did I miss? The mean killing machine does it again. The Hydra, mate. When is the last time that the Hydra has disappointed anyone? I can't remember it. I cannot remember it. I don't know what map it was, by the way. I forgot the map order. Mm -mm. Cosmic. We are going to hop into Cosmic Sapphire. As we are back on Europe, that should obviously favor Gerald a little bit. Let's hope that Gerald can prevent the trio, and that means that all four series did not go 3-0. That's what I always hope for, guys. That's my only mission. And obviously being here, observing, setting up the lobbies, 
making sure that the players are here entertaining you guys but other than that my only mission is to make sure that we don't have any trios so far we're three for three but this is the first time we're looking at a 2-0 lead but we are on europe so i kind of believe i'll go ahead and shoot scarlet and invite i have, I have scarlet on my friend list that's a lot easier <laughs> ready when you guys are Gerald says ready. Indy is always ready. Scarlet is ready. Let's go ahead and hop into game three. This is the main event of the sixth edition of the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts. I will be back with another edition next Friday. I will uh, try to make it a banger of a lineup. Because I do think the week after that I might be in Sweden. So yeah, we are going to do our best. I'll start working on that on Sunday and see what I can come up with. But now, let's go ahead and hop into game three. Round three. Fight. In the bottom right side of Cosmic Sapphire, we're looking at the main base of the man who now needs your support. He is down 0-2, a successful Protoss player from Poland, representing Sidestorm Gaming. It's Gerald. Hello, Nathan. In the top left side of Cosmic Sapphire, we are looking at the main base of our Canadian hero, Up to Zero, representing the Shopify Rebellion. I hope that I can visit their headquarters one day, by the way. It looks really cool. Every time they have like a little meeting with Harstum, TLO, the pictures always look so nice. This is Scarlet. Shopify Rebellion is really cool. Exclamation mark hoodie, guys, in the chat. I think it still works. I don't know if it still works, but... I know Lambo had it for a while, and I copied it. And I have that cool hoodie too. It is a bit big, but I like big hoodies. That's I feel like what hoodies are ultimately made for. It's to be comfy. Make it great to play video games in. Hmm? Not foodie. I am a foodie, but hoodie mate. Huh. Exclamation mark hoodie. We would love to see you in Canada. Yeah, it's been a while for me, amigo. I think the last time was the most... Yeah, the WCS, but which one was that? That was even before the pandemic then, I guess, right? Yeah. Man, that's such a long time ago. <laughs> I was still young the last time I went to Canada, guys. I had some poutine in Montreal. That was good. I've been to Montreal a few times. I've also been to Toronto at least twice. And I went to Quebec City. Which is very adorable. I like Quebec City. Yeah. Scarlet was forced to take her expand at 9 o'clock. So that does mean that the drones from the main base have to travel a little bit longer before they can start mining. I always kind of like this of a start as a Protoss. But then at the same time you do get a bit scared because that obviously means the hatchery is closer to your side of the map. And that means that you start getting a little worried about getting potentially all in. Imagine the Dutch cheese on poutine. Business idea. I do kind of hate some of the cheese that they use. It really depends, I guess, on which place you go to. Sometimes I thought it was awesome and sometimes I thought it was a little mediocre. What is poutine? I don't know if you're Dutch. It's basically a cup salon, but then a bit different. But I think it's relatively close to a, a cup salon. We have a adept. Okay, it cancels the shade. So Gerald's really hoping to get lucky here. So far, not very lucky. One drone does fall. Can Gerald get a second drone? The regeneration kicked in on this one. That's actually kind of funny. The health regeneration saving this drone. I don't know if I like losing an adept like that. I honestly feel it makes more sense to wait until you have two adepts and then try to get lucky. Pronounce good up on fact. Absolutely not. There is no such thing as Gouda cheese, okay? It's Gouda. And anybody who says otherwise is wrong. I had uh, Americans correcting me quite a few times on how to pronounce Gouda. I'm like, you guys seem very silly right now. It's like, oh honey, it's Gouda. 
it's pronounced Gouda. I was like, no, it's not. I'm Dutch. <laughs> I know where the city is. I've been there. <laughs> it's not Gouda. You guys made this up. <laughs> That's not even a place. Second Oracle is on the way for Gerald, playing it safe right now. Obviously, there is no more room for errors being down 0-2 in the main event. There is $150 on the line to win this best of five. That is like 700 zloty. And you can do a lot of fun things with 700 zloty. I've been to Poland many times in my life. So. Obviously, Gerald wants to win. I don't know if he's going to have as much fun of those slotties as I would have, but... He is going to try to get a little lucky here with the oracles. Got Stu a little greedy there. Queen from downtown. Steph Curry with the shot. Scarlet picks off one of the oracles. and It just does not seem to be Gerald's day, guys. Scarlet is playing very well. All the little things are going her way. But she's also just forcing a lot of these errors. Giving Gerald the idea that certain things are a good idea when it clearly isn't. It just seems that... Uh, Scarlet is playing better ZVP than Gerald is playing PvZ today. And that does surprise me a little bit. Like, I do think that Scarlet overall is a better player. But I thought in this specific matchup, and especially with some European server action, I kind of thought that Gerald could surprise a lot of us. It's obviously not over yet. We're not going to count Gerald out before it is officially over. This is nice. Two random adapts getting four drones. Maybe five. No. Not five. Four is decent, but... Gerard is playing really well lately. Yeah, he's been solid. But it's been like almost two years now, guys, of Gerard sometimes sneaking into the playoffs of DreamHack Masters Europe, which means you're one of the best 16 players in Europe, you're one of the best 12 players in Europe. Do you think high-profile countries in SC2 will remain on top for the next RTS? Is there RTS steroids in the water in Holland? I don't think we are a top-tier RTS country at all, mate. We are not even close. Right. I feel like the last time we were ultra successful it was with Robbie in Warcraft. But I do not think the Netherlands qualifies as top tier. Um, but yeah, I do believe that we're going to have good players in Stormgate. Obviously. <laughs> but I'm not too worried about Stormgate, guys. There are still a lot of things to be very excited of for uh, StarCraft 2. And, you know, never celebrate too early. I know Stormgate is going to be absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait for it. And I will obviously start playing it from the very first day. But until it's there, I'm just going to have the best possible time with StarCraft. Because I can guarantee you guys, even if we all love Stormgate, we are going to miss the StarCraft 2 days. Cherish what we have right now. And this is not the final chapter yet, guys. I, I am very confident that we'll see more great StarCraft action until Stormgate finally comes up. I know there is always a lot of negativity being spread. And Starcraft is dead. The game has been apparently dead. Well, nice snipe, by the way. Nice snipe on the hatchery. Nice recall. People have been trying to uh, spread negativity for the last six, seven years. But I think the scene is still going strong. We have new, cool organizations like Bastilus joining in. But even when it comes down to Blizzard and uh, ESL, obviously Blizzard has not been perfect. Far from it, even. I think we all know that. But it, it's not over yet, guys. Enjoy it, and enjoy it for as long as we can. Yeah. That's a lot of links, by the way, for Scarlet. It's a lot of links with plus one, but the entry snipe was quite big. Now I'm getting a bit distracted because I was talking about other stuff. Oh, we already used Rico. We already used Rico. That means the stalkers are stuck, but the stasis trap is going to save these stalkers for at least a little while. Man, that was a big stasis, guys, because Gerald had nowhere out. Yes, definitely the best thing that Blizzard has done for us in StarCraft has been uh, the three-year deal with ESL. And hopefully there is more to come. Mm -hmm. Stalkers are going to get in range of this hatchery one more time. Scarlet was anticipating that defensive blink and that means that the Stalkers can blink for a split second and this is actually a decent amount of Stalkers falling to these uh, pretty feisty plus one wings and Hydras. The Hydras have muscular augments, their speed upgrade. They do not have the ranged upgrade just yet but the range will be increased the moment that this is done. And it's kind of nice by the way when I don't have chat on screen that you guys can see the upgrades a bit better. 
But I do really just like having the chat on screen for all the streams with like a one or two minute delay. It's, it's so painful to talk to chat with two minutes delay. And I did bring that up recently. Had another chat with some of the guys from ESL. And I was like, guys, for the love of everything, please reduce the delay. And they're like, yeah, we know, but it's not that simple. I was like, oh, it is. <laughs> oh, it is. I was like, I'm just going to go live on Monday with no delay. Because we have Stalkers and Zealots battling with uh, Lynx and Hydras. More Zealous counterattacking. Gerald definitely finding a lot of success in this game, guys. Obviously, if Scarlet can just comfortably start mining off the gold, this can still become a crazy, uh, scary game for Gerald. But so far, so good. These Zealots are like a couple of hits short of killing this hatchery. That's so unfortunate. Hydra Link Bane still has potential. Gerald is even going up to five bases. Storm is on the way. Eunice lost resource tap. Now I actually do think that Scarlet lost... Let's say 2.2k more. Oh wow, it's dead even. <laughs> it's actually straight up dead even. I guess Scarlet has still has a lot of battle units. I'm off. It's over. Watched up, Ruddy. Couple of Zealots do get caught up. I guess uh, Gerald has been playing kind of a reckless style with all the Zealots and... Man, Oracle died. Start adding... Okay, that's a lot of Zealots, by the way. We have Lynx counterattacking, and the Lynx do get on top of a very exposed fifth base. Is there a way for Gerald to save this? Seems like the answer is no. We have a couple of Banings right now. These Banings do not have plus two. So they don't have the one-shot potential, but they do have two-shot potential. <laughs> that High Templar was just hugging the Baning for a little while. That was pretty adorable. Come over here. No one has to hurt you. And then the Baning exploded. Lynx, will they get a kill on the hand Nexus? The answer is yes. And it does mean that Scarlet is now the five base player. But obviously only at 63 drones, guys. I think Gerald needs to chill. If Gerald reads the game correctly, he has to understand that at this point, it's really not up to Gerald to do something. Like, you want to clean up the creep a little bit and go for the occasional tiny run by. But Scarlet is coming. Scarlet will attack you. And all that Gerald needs to do is spam cannons, batteries, and storms. What supply block? Well, I've seen a lot of High Templars now. How many of those High Templars will we morph into Archons? Four out of six. I can live with that. Like Scarlet, her attack is actually going to be pretty in intimidating. Especially because I feel like we don't have as many storms as I would like to see. Come on, Gerald. Prevent the trio. After that, I do not care who wins game four. But be nice to have an evening with zero trio. Scarlet has split up her army a little bit. A couple of Lynx, Banes, and Hydras are going to try to deny the fifth base of Gerald one more time. Shield Battery gets surrounded. Shield Battery gets picked off. A couple of Zealots get picked off too. Ooh. Nice dodge on the storms by Scarlet, I'd say. Those storms really did not do a whole lot. And this fight on the right side, I think it's going quite all right, especially if a couple of Rexy units show up. The Nexus is completed, which means that Gerald could recall if he wants to, and he will recall. But what kind of a recall is this going to be? Okay. Tiny, but good enough. Tiny, but good enough. That's my uh, life motto, by the way, guys. Don't ask any follow-up questions. As we have more links morphing into Banelings in the bottom left side. Gerald wipes in a few more High Templars. Now there is a lot of Storm to work with. Seven. That should be... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Archons are going to get surrounded. Obviously, Archons are very good against the links, but now they do fully get surrounded. A few Storms do land. Yeah, good hold by Gerald. This is the main attack, and it's such a shame that Gerald has just no cannons here whatsoever. Can the Banelings connect with the probes? The answer is no. Really sick save on the workers. One Immortal is a bit far forward. Scarlet should absolutely get this Nexus. And uh, Robo does not get the Immortal. 11 probes went down and all of that. I am surprised it wasn't more. I, I'm just kind of sad, guys, that Gerald does not really have a lot of observers. And, and does not read this game for what it is. Gerald is playing it with a sense of urgency. Which once more shows here. He might be fine, though, guys. Don't get me wrong. He might win this game. But Gerald could have just been the defender near cannons and batteries. And he would have been absolutely fine. Instead, every fight is going away from set of defenses. And now the Archons are starting to melt. We do have a few more storms. Banings are making it through the cracks. High Templars are exposed. Scarlet with the surround. Link's coming in from the right side. A few Hydras show up as well. And that means that Gerald now loses a lot of very expensive units. Did not rebuild this base. That's a shame. But Scarlet has been down in workers for I don't know how long. And obviously it does have the gold, but the gold doesn't even run for that long. And this is a Lair Tech Zerg, guys. It's Lair Tech, not Hive Tech. 
Gerald has played it for the last five minutes like he needs to do something. He needs to be out and about on the map. He needs to take the crazy fights. And it's actually Scarlet who was already planning to attack Gerald. But then it's like, all right, if you are attacking me, that's perfectly fine. And I do want to give kudos to how Scarlet split up her army. I thought it was very smart. Hydra's, Lynx, couple of Banelings on the right side. And I think the moment that Gerald moved more units towards the top right, that's when the main army came in from the bottom. It's it's really good play by Scarlet. Of a low economy, 58 drones is all that Scarlet has. But Scarlet does have a big old Zerg army. And Gerald just does not have a whole lot anymore. 16 Stalkers, 2 Archons and 4 High Templars. We're gonna use a recall into the main base. What are we recalling? A bunch of Stalkers. And look at the minimap. Scarlet is everywhere. This is going to be so damn difficult for Gerald to manage. I mean, everywhere we look, guys. In your natural, links are dancing. In the 3 o'clock base, links are dancing. In the triangle base, we have Hydra's dancing. As a couple of storms do rain from above. But I have a hard time believing that 35 supply of Protoss is going to be enough to deal with 100 supply. Scarlet played this game, honestly, very smart. And Gerald just misread it a little bit. Great execution, and unfortunately for me, we do have our first 3 0 of the day. Scarlet gets a clean sweep over Gerald, who has made it multiple times into the playoffs of DreamHack Masters Europe. So for everybody who always says that anybody who qualifies or is top 16, top 12 in Europe would crush NA, Scarlet says, well, I'm still here. Australia is still there. Trigger is still there. Neep is still there. That was a very good series by Scarlet. 15. Oh, that guy. We got five bonus subbies. The guys from Basilisk asked me if I wanted to receive a little bit of a payment for doing this or just give some subs. And I said, just give some subs because that means that more people get an ad free experience and I think everyone will enjoy it a bit more. But I think they gave me five extra today. So either a slip up or I got lucky. <laughs> well, yeah, that is going to do it for today. I promised my mom that I will walk Rico and Ronda. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this one relatively short. Uh, fun night. Big shout out to all the players. Thank you to Scarlet. Thank you to Gerald. Thank you to my pal Cell and Blood Milan for opening the night up. Goblin Disc was a great series. And I think Rob against Namshar. It was StarCraft. Just very different. But I think overall it was a lot of fun. This was the sixth edition of the Basilisk Big Rain Bouts. As a final request, I want to ask you guys one more time. Exclamation mark Basilisk in the chat. We'll link you guys to the Basilisk Twitter account. And if you guys want to make me happy, all you have to do is just respond to their tweets every now and then. Give them a like, give them a follow, and just uh, let them know that you appreciate them joining the magical world of StarCraft 2. And that you're enjoying the Friday Night events. We'll be back with another edition of the Big Brain Bouts. $500 on the line for the players every single Friday. And 